I've had a lot of people ask me if I would keep my 2023 Corvette Z06 or if I would rather have the new 2024 Corvette E-Ray. The answer for me is actually pretty straightforward, but this is a great opportunity to talk about some of these similarities, some of the differences, how do they compare, how do they feel, because I have spent a good amount of time with the Z06, but I've also had the opportunity to get up and close with the new E-Ray and gotten to experience it. So since we're outside the car, let's talk about the exterior first. The big news for the E-Ray is it gets the same wide body treatment as the Z06. So it's 3.6 inches wider than the regular Stingray, much more aggressive and it's functional. You have the large side intakes on the side, just like the Z06. Front fascia also has much more airflow, much more aggressive. The E-Ray actually has an additional cooler that's like vertically oriented. I think it's on the driver's side up in that front grille for some of the electrical cooling system. The wheels, same size on the E-Ray. They do get a unique design for the regular. It's like a twisted five spoke design, whereas these are the regular Z06 wheels. But on both the E-Ray and the Z06, you can option carbon fiber wheels. Behind those wheels, you can have carbon ceramic brakes as optional on the Z06, but on the E-Ray, carbon ceramic brakes are standard. One big difference though is, as far as I know, you can't get the more aggressive aero package like on the Z06 with the Z07. So with the canards and the big fixed carbon fiber wing, that is still a Z06 with Z07 type of thing. For the regular E-Ray carbon package, you can get that in exposed carbon fiber, which looks pretty cool. We got to see that in person. Obviously, badging is also going to change. We have Z06 badges on those side wide intakes here. On the E-Ray, it says E-Ray, and also there's like a different E-Ray kind of Stingray shaped badge on the rear deck lid. Another big, big difference is going to be exhaust tip placement. On the Z06, we have the quad center exit exhaust, whereas on the E-Ray, it has the outboard dual one. So it's still four tips, but they're split just like the Stingray because we'll get to this in a moment with powertrain. The E-Ray also has the Stingray LT2 6.2 liter V8, so same exhaust placement there. Where it might get a little confusing is in Europe, I believe the Z06 is getting the outboard exhaust because of regulations packaging for the exhaust system. So in Europe, the Z06 and the E-Ray may have the exact same exhaust as far as I know. So you may be forgiven if you get them confused, even in regular form when they drive by, because they're both the wide body, the same intakes on the side. They're going to look pretty similar with the Z07, a bit more aggressive. That stands out a bit more, but the base car is going to look pretty similar. Now, there's some other changes for 2024 also for the Corvette E-Ray in terms of colors. We have cacti, riptide blue, and Seawolf. I have seen Cacti and Seawolf in person. Cacti is kind of a light grayish green color. It's pretty cool. Seawolf, I think, is gorgeous. It's like a dark, almost nardo gray, but it has a ton of metallic flake in it. So I'm a big fan of that color. So that's new for 2024. Also, this one is just annoying for me. You can have a soft closed frunk on 2024 Corvettes. On the 2023 and earlier, you press the button and it opens up here. And if I were to close it, the frunk, Kind of got to gently cinch it, make sure it's tight. On the new 2024, you kind of just drop it in as soft closes, just like the trunk. Uh, a little change for 2024. When I saw that, I was extremely jealous. I was like, wait, I would love that on my Z06. The E-Ray, just like the Z06 and the Stingray, is going to be available in hardtop coupe form with a removable targo top, or you can add hardtop convertible. I think that covers the majority of the similarities and differences on the exterior. So with that, let's hop in the car. We'll take it for a drive and talk about everything from the powertrain to the interior, to how it feels, and obviously the price difference. <laughs> the Z06 has a 5.5 liter flat plane crank V8, and it holds the record of being the world's most powerful naturally aspirated V8 ever. It beats out the SLS Black Series. This is a 5.5 NAV that revs to 8,600 RPM and makes 670 horsepower and 460 pound-feet of torque. 460 pound-feet of torque. Remember that number. We'll get to that in a moment. Both of the cars have a 8-speed dual-clutch transmission that's in the C8 family, but the Z06 has a couple changes. I believe like more aggressive gearing. They did a little bit to toughen it up. I didn't hear anything about the E-Ray transmission, but because it's the Stingray V8, I think it may have the exact same 8-speed dual clutch because the extra power doesn't affect the transmission, right? It's the electric motor up front. The E-Ray is a hybrid. Let's make that very, very, very clear. It is not a fully electric Corvette. The Corvette E-Ray is a hybrid, but not a plug-in hybrid. It's just a regular conventional hybrid. 
It has a 6.2 liter V8, also naturally aspirated, mid-engine, like the C8 Stingray. It is the C8 Stingray engine. So that means 495 horsepower and 470 pound-feet of torque. So that gas V8 on its own already makes more torque than the Z06. That's the thing. When you go to small displacement, high revving NA like this car, you don't have as much torque. But where the E-Ray really, really turns it up is it has an electric motor on the front axle that makes 160 horsepower and 125 pound-feet of torque. So the combined total power output of the Corvette E-Ray is 655 horsepower and 595 pound-feet of torque. That is a massive 135, yeah, 135 pound-feet advantage compared to the Z06. And it means it's all-wheel drive. So it's the world's first ever all-wheel drive Corvette and the world's first ever electrified Corvette. Now, I mentioned it's not a plug-in hybrid. It's just a hybrid for performance. It's got a tiny little 1.9 kilowatt hour battery pack in the E-Ray, and they put it along the central tunnel here for better weight distribution. There is a weight penalty, right? It's something like 200 almost 300 pounds in addition, but it's hard to compare. Dry weight for the E-Ray is quoted at 3,770-ish pounds. That's, uh, I call it two, 300 pounds heavier, but the problem is it's the wide body treatment, so bigger wheels, more body, all that type of stuff. So you don't really compare it apples to apples to the Stingray, and it more than makes up with it in the power increase. It may, it's the quickest Corvette ever. The E-Ray does zero to 60 in two and a half seconds, quarter mile in 10 and a half. We did launch control in the cold, I mean, it's like 40 degrees in Michigan on all seasons, and it just hooked and went. It just goes. It's really, really fast because you get all that torque immediately. So off the line, it'll demolish a Z06. Up top, this might have the advantage in terms of um, top end performance just due to the engine and the lighter weight, but the E-Ray is no slouch, and it's really just a hybrid for performance. We were very clearly shown that when we did autocross, and then, oh, we depleted the battery. Let's do a quick little loop around and recharge the battery back at it again. E-Ray also has some cool powertrain tricks. There's a stealth mode, so you can drive it as a front-wheel drive electric Corvette if you're trying to leave the house or sneak in late or whatever it is, right? A little more stealthy, up to 45 miles an hour if you exceed that speed or require more uh, if you floor the gas pedal or if you increase HVAC load or something like that and it needs to kick in the engine or fire up that 6.2 liter V8. So you still get that. It's like the best of both worlds. You get the torque power flexibility of the electric front motor you still have a big American V8, which a lot of people actually think sounds more Corvette-ish than this, which sounds more like a Ferrari, which I personally love, obviously. I love the Z06 sound. It's so amazing. Some people prefer the traditional uh, pushrod V8, but with the, Sting uh, with the Stingray, with the Stingray, and obviously with the E-Ray, you get that noise. So don't lose your minds about that. The E-Ray does get the kind of amplified electrical noises, which to me makes it sound like a spaceship. I think it was paired very well when you're in car and under power, under load. It sounds really, really cool because you still hear that V8 behind you. The Z06 is whole other tier. The, the exhaust note for this car to me is so special. Oh. <laughs> and for me, that's part of the emotional experience of a sports car, and I would still prefer this one. Totally different personalities. Different personalities is something I'm gonna get more into. So in terms of powertrain, those are the big differences. Hybrid for the E-Ray, purely naturally aspirated for the Z06. They're, this one's rear wheel drive. The E-Ray is E all wheel drive because electric assisted enabled all wheel drive system, both a eight speed dual clutch transmission. The way they drive and feel is totally different. I haven't driven an E-Ray yet. I just got a passenger ride along, but it was pretty extensive. Not only did we get to experience the quiet electric stealth mode, then fired up the engine, then we did launch control twice, up the, hit 100 miles an hour so quickly, right? The power and torque is immense. We just zipped away. The Z06 is also fast. I am actually pretty shocked at how hard this car pulls. Almost 700 horsepower, right? I mean, that. I remember when the Inventador came out, I was like, oh my gosh, a 700 horsepower Lamborghini. This makes almost as much horsepower as the Aventador when it first came out, 670. This uh, a different type of experience, right? The sound, the way the power delivery is. I like the linear feel of an NA, NA V8 that just keeps revving out. My biggest complaint with the Stingray 
when it when it first launched and i was like this is such a capable car the chassis is great the transmission is great the interior is great i think it looks cool it handles well with the z51 um and magnetic ride suspension but the engine just like topped out at like 6500 rpm and with cars like the R8s, the GT3s, the Ferraris. I'm used to motors revving out to like 8,000, 9,000 RPM. And for me, that was part of the fun. And I just like, I was like, Lord, please. Z06 solves that. The emotion, the rawness, the absurdity of this engine going to nearly 9,000 RPM is just such an overwhelming experience. And I absolutely love that for it. So for me, I picked this one. Now, the interior, how does the interior compare? Well, they're pretty much the same which is good because the C8 generation interiors are phenomenal. They are up there with some of the best sports cars you can buy. If you do, when you do like a high tier 3LT, even 2LT, 2LZ, 3LZ, this is a 3LZ. Everything is covered in stitched leather. Like you got all the tech and creature comforts too. That's a big thing. Front end lift, uh, front and rear cameras, heated cooled seats, heated steering wheel, digital rear view camera, like all this stuff. Like my R8 doesn't have. So the E-Ray and the Z06 are a tie from that regard. Interior is phenomenal, what you expect out of C8. But there are some changes that the E-Ray gets in 2024. There's new animations and displays on a screen when you change your drive modes. Um, so it gets a couple of those updates. I think those will cascade across the 2024 Corvette. Wouldn't be surprised if 2024 Z06s also get those, but as a 23, it was just the previous cycle. Those aren't huge, massive, fundamental changes. Um, but the inside of the E-Ray is... Uh, shockingly similar to the Z06. You can get the same carbon packs. The one I think I sat in had the interior carbon pack, which this entire console becomes carbon fiber. I could have optioned on this car. I decided not to because I like the leather. I'm not a huge fan of too much carbon fiber on the interior. So this has a two-tone, but same thing with the steering wheel. There's an E-Ray badge, carbon fiber instead of Z06. Very, very similar. So between those two, pretty much identical minus the screen changes, which I was a little bit jealous about. And obviously there was like little buttons on the inboard side here for some of the things related to the hybrid setup. So interior wise, you get the same benefits as a Z06 in the E-Ray. Let's talk a bit more about the experience. So I've been driving my Z06 a lot and I'm actually gonna hit a thousand miles soon. It's at 973 and we're about to go through a little <laughs> Struggling for traction a little bit. <laughs> what a machine. This thing is very track focused. Very, very, very track focused. The tires are Michelin Cup 2 R's, which are track slicks. They are enormously wide. 275 up front, 345s out back, 21 inch, and they come from the factory with pretty much no tread. When they're up to temperature on a nice dry, warm surface, they grip stupendously. But get caught in a rainstorm, you're putting this in weather mode and being real gentle and slow. That happened to me. I was driving from LA out to Scottsdale, pretty big rainstorm, and I'm doing 45 miles an hour like, ah, be careful. So it's not the most friendly all around. That's because I got the Z07 pack. The regular Z06 comes on PS4S tires, which are much more well-rounded summer performance tires. But the feel of this car is just hard-edged. It's just always like a little frantic from the engines. It's, 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 it's a race car feel. I let a friend, a uh, friend Gray, who is a race car driver. He drives an Aston GT4. It was just in Dubai driving a AMG GT3 class car. And he goes, hey, this feels kind of like a race car. He was pretty impressed. He liked it. And that's pretty high praise. They benchmarked the Ferrari 458 for this. And it feels like an American Ferrari 458. I describe it like a pissed off 458. It has that raw, aggressive feel. The E-Ray is like a Stingray with an extra 160 horsepower because that's what it is. It is just a boosty from electric, just really, really torquey and powerful Stingray, which is good. It's just different. Much more well-rounded in terms of day-to-day -day drivability. Like if you were to daily drive a car and you want to have all year round traction, maybe put winter tires on it, the E-Ray is tremendously good at that. And it just, the usability of the power too. You just like give it some pedal and it just goes, right? It just shoots out of whatever scenario you're in. We did auto crossing and coming through those turns, you could feel the car grabbing grip in the front end and it just powers out of stuff. Whereas the Z06, you gotta be at the right rev range, you gotta be on the, on the limit, pushing it hard. It's a very, very different feel. Not to say one is better than the other, it depends on your preference. For me, I wanted the emotional, pure sports car, supercar feel, naturally aspirated V8, so I went with this. I'm keeping this. I love this car so much. More than my R8, more than my Shelby, more than anything I've owned 
more than a lot of cars I've driven that cost twice as much. I am infatuated with my Z06. It is an amazing machine. The E-Ray, I respect a lot. If I was looking for a Corvette that I wanted to drive all year round, living somewhere cold and be more comfortable with it and have that torque and flexibility, E-Ray is phenomenal because it also has the fun factor of turning it up to almost six, I mean, 655 horsepower and almost 600 pound-feet of torque is tremendous. I saw one of my friends uh, posted, Jack from Savage Geese. He was like, this is a really cool car. And he said something about how it made him sad for the NSX. Cause that's what the NSX could have been. A big, powerful, naturally aspirated engine or just gas engine paired with the hybrid assist to get the best of both worlds for max performance, max capability. I don't want to hear anybody in the comments complaining about electrification and hybrids because you can't tell me that you think the 918, the P1, and LaFerrari are not cool cars. Those are the holy trinity of hypercars. There is applications of hybridization that can be awesome, and the E-Ray is one of those cars. Super impressed. Pricing, pricing, pricing. E-Ray is not cheap either. It starts at over $100,000, six-figure Corvette. And given the capability, the performance, the quickest Corvette ever, did I mention 2.50 to 60, 10 and a half quarter mile? Yeah, that's really quick. Um, it's at 104,000 ish for the coupe, and then the convertible is like 111, I believe, and then you can option it up with carbon fiber wheels. But I don't think the price ceiling will be as high as the Z06. Z06 to start also in that low hundred range, I believe it was like 106 base price. But once you throw on 3LZ, carbon Z07, carbon ceramic brakes, I didn't even option convertible, all the interior carbon, or most importantly, the carbon fiber wheels. Z07, Z06s can get to $170,000 easily. I haven't seen the pricing listed out in terms of options and availability and configurator for the E-Ray, but I suspect they won't be optioned quite as high, so there's still a little bit of uh, separation there. Will they still be $130,000, $140,000 cars? Absolutely, I think so. My Z06 as equipped right now is $151,000. So they're pretty close. I actually think some people may jump from Z06s to E-Rays because they, they see some of the appeal of the, the E-Ray. I respect it a lot. It's a pretty dang impressive car. So ultimately to answer the question, am I gonna keep my Z06 or swap it for E-Ray or add an E-Ray? <laughs> no, I don't have the money to add an E-Ray. I spent all of my money on the Z06. This is the most expensive car I've ever bought. I love it. I think it's worth it because I'm so in love with it. So if you're waiting for a Z06, still want one, I think it's worth the wait. You wanna get an E-Ray, register your interest because I think that'll do very, very well too. It's a Stingray with way more power, way more aggression, it really does a lot of things so well. But me, I am keeping my Z06. That was a bajillion error. Probably go grab an E-Ray too, just for the fun comparison, having the different personality. Probably daily drive the E-Ray much more than the Z06 and turn this into just like a track car. But I am not a bajillion error. I am a thousand error. Uh, <laughs> so I'm going to stick with my Z06 because I absolutely love this car. I am at, I'm looking forward to spending more time in and with the E-Ray. We got the ride along experience, so make sure you check out that video. That was really, really cool to go see the car, learn about it from the engineers, talk to the designers, get in the car and go out dynamically ride along. I was giggling, you watch that video. I was having fun. So I think that's enough of a testament that like me, and I've gotten to experience a lot of really cool stuff. I had a big ass grin on my face and I liked it. So that that's pretty good. So with that, those are my thoughts on comparing the similarities and differences of the Corvette E-Ray and the Z06. I love my Z06, I wanna keep it. I think it's good for the overall C8 and Corvette brand to add more options, and the E-Ray is a pretty awesome addition as they ease into electrification for the entire brand. We'll probably get an all electric Corvette at some point. That's like inevitable, right? I'm not gonna speculate on future other variants because again, I don't know more than anybody else does. So it would just be pointless speculation. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Much more Z06 content coming very, very soon. Thanks for watching.